So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Michelle Jones, and I'm excited to speak to you this morning on my experience with the District Municipality of Squamish. I chose to complete my practicum in a local government setting because my interests lie in how local governments and community planners uh, improve health through the built and social environments. Today I will be presenting on the methods and a selection of findings of a health and equity lens analysis of the District of Squamish's official community plan, which I will refer to as the OCP. Uh, in order to highlight a selection of public health implications of community planning. So the District of Squamish is part of Vancouver Coastal Health Sea to Sky region and is the largest center within the Squamish Lillooet Regional District. I worked with in the planning department, uh, which as explained on the slide here, is responsible for long range physical and social community planning. The objective of my practicum was to explore ways that health could be promoted through community planning. And this opportunity arose because of a project called the Squamish Learning Lab, which was a joint collaboration between the district, Plan H, Vancouver Coastal Health, and other partners, and was established to explore how the OCP could be reviewed using a health lens. My job was to help the planning department expand the scope of the Learning Lab project. So for folks who are unfamiliar with OCPs, they are municipal bylaws and they're legislated uh, through the BC Local Government Act. They serve as a blueprint for elected officials to base their decisions on. The OCP states long range community vision, goals and objectives and then contains the policy to help achieve these goals. In order for an OCP to be an accurate reflection of community, uh, current community vision and context, it's typically reviewed at regular intervals. And these reviews are no small task. Usually they take multiple years from initiation to adoption. And then you can see I've listed some topics covered uh, that an OCP will typically cover, such as transportation, recreation, and land use. But this is by no means an exhaustive list, and this list will vary between municipalities as well. So the project I undertook with the district was a health and equity lens analysis of the current Squamish OCP. And I did this so that the district would be aware of the OCP's strengths and weaknesses in healthy and equitable policy. And also to highlight how the OCP could strengthen its commitments to community health and health equity during upcoming review. <laughs> so the district hadn't done much healthy community work prior to my practicum. So I had to complete a lot of background work before I could start this analysis. Uh, I first had to figure out what the actual health trends and priority issues were in Squamish. I also reviewed uh, existing district policy other than the OCP to understand the material that would end up informing the upcoming OCP review. And I also completed a scan of the literature to make sure that my analysis was evidence informed. Once these materials were completed, I began my analysis. Um, so to support the Squamish Learning Lab project, I did use the Provincial Health Services Authority's Healthy Built Environment Linkages Toolkit as a framework for analyzing policies with a health lens. I compared each policy in the OCP with the healthy planning principles listed in the Linkages Toolkit and assessed any similarities or, and discrepancies. Since the Linkages Toolkit does only address built environment principles, I also referred heavily to literature on the social determinants of health and also Squamish health trends so that the analysis, analysis would encompass health uh, more holistically. I then analyzed the entire OCP through an equity lens by uh, considering policy outcomes for different Squam Squamish population groups. And finally, I did undertake a, comp a comparative analysis between Squamish's OCP and a selection of OCPs from around the province as well. Thank you. So what did I find? <laughs> I found that Squamish's OCP was particularly strong in healthy neighborhood design principles, listed here in an excerpt from the Linkages Toolkit, which include elements such as walkability, mixed land use, complete neighborhoods, and uh, enhanced connectivity. 
DOCP also contains strong statements in support of environmental sustainability, and the community vision statement did contain, uh, sorry, did suggest high quality of life for all ages, cultures, and incomes. I also identified a number of weaknesses throughout my analysis as well, though. Um, one of them was that community health is not explicitly articulated in the community vision. Um, another was that the district does not have an OCP implementation uh, and monitoring strategy in effect. Excuse me. The third was that healthy, healthy housing and transportation network principles, as described in the linkages toolkit, were poorly represented through OCP policy. And um, the fourth was an inconsistent consideration of different population groups throughout policy and also in the OCP consultation process from the previous review. Notably, uh, the recognition of different Squamish neighborhoods was inconsistent and the unique needs of children, youth and families was also poorly recognized through policy. So I'd like to consider some of these weaknesses I've identified in some more detail. Uh, first of all, uh, the OCP community vision statement does set the stage for goals, objectives, and ultimately policies. It's kind of like a trickle-down effect. The statement, which would clearly articulate community health, could help to influence a more consistent distribution of healthy policy statements. It may also help to provide support for health impact assessment in decision-making, as decision-makers do look to the OCP for guidance. The lack of implementation and monitoring was a surprising finding because without these systems, there is little accountability, accountability for policy outcomes and health outcomes may not be attributed to OCP implementation. Unintended or negative outcomes for different population groups may also go unnoticed, which may aggravate or create health inequities within the community. But the most interesting findings for me were the discrepancies between policy and real health issues in Squamish. Affordable housing, active transportation, and early childhood development were by far three of the biggest issues I identified for the Squamish community. And if we remember back to the findings slide, policy for housing, transportation, and children, youth, and families were found to be considerably lacking throughout the OCP. So it's interesting to contemplate this apparent link between lacking OCP stewardship and actual poor, poor performance in these indicators. So the purpose of this analysis was to assess the current OCP's strengths and weaknesses in healthy and equitable policy, and to assess the current OCP's capacity for healthy and equitable policy upon review. Through this analysis, an apparent link between the OCP and significant health issues in Squamish was identified. This discovery may hopefully help to provide further rationale for using a health lens during the next OCP review. Through this project, the most promising recommendations I've identified for the district to undertake is to clearly define health in their community vision, to develop an implementation and community monitoring system and strategy, and to incorporate greater consideration of all population groups and neighborhoods by first developing a more comprehensive consultation and outreach strategy. The implications for public health of my project are hopefully <laughs> great. <laughs> um, my project has highlighted the relationship between OCP de and determinants of health and suggests a link between them, OCP and manifestations of these determinants within a community. Um, as obesity and related chronic illness remain a significant public health concern, the use of the OCP as prevention through active transportation promotion and community food strategy, strategy is also hopeful. And the OCP could also be used as a promising prevention strategy for mental and emotional health issues by promoting conviviality and social connectedness, access to green and natural space, and enhancement of the built environment. Finally, the importance of a bi-directional and integrated working relationship between community planners and public health was probably the most uh, significant message I took away from my project uh, and practicum. As a more common understanding of public health and community planning <clears throat> will hopefully help to ensure the success of local government initiatives and ultimately help to create healthier communities. On that note, I wouldn't have been able to complete this project without the expertise and overwhelming support of my supervisor at the District of Squamish, Sarah McJanet, and the rest of the District of Squamish. And I'd also like to thank Dr. Catherine Northington and Victoria Barr for their encouragement and support throughout the term for also being my first and second readers. And thank you everyone today.
another fascinating project. Okay, questions. Oh, all right. Kirsten has one. I'm expecting Victoria to put up her Awesome job, Michelle. Um, for those who weren't in Victoria's class, we had um, a review, a reflections forum where we talked about what was going on and, and Michelle had to go first. So I was just wondering, Michelle, if ultimately you did find the bathrooms and somewhere to put your lunch. I did. That's great. I did. I ultimately learned to avoid the fridge for the whole time though, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for those of you who aren't part of the MPH dialogue group, the first few weeks of practicum, and, and this is probably the same for the BA students as well, it's all about figuring out where to get coffee, where the bathroom is, how to get a phone, uh, yeah, whether you can use the fridge, if there's a microwave, all those really, really important questions when you go to a new organization. Yeah. Other questions? Michael's got one. Oh, well. Uh, thanks, Michelle. It was great. I, one of the things that I'd be interested in hearing your comments on is you talked about specifically urban planners at the end, a bi-directional relationship uh, between pu public health and urban planning. But what about other actors in municipal structures? Uh, yeah. You know, so there are people who are involved in recreation, for example, mm -hmm. or transportation planning, or you know, other other key roles that aren't necessarily embodied in the the plan itself. And so, I guess ultimately, I'm interested to know what your sense of their understanding of the roles that municipal governance more generally might play in in enhancing uh, population health and reducing health inequities might be. That's a great question. Um, I found that in where I was working, particularly in Squamish, it's a smaller municipality. Um, and I found that once the dialogue opened up around public health and transportation and recreation and all that, it, it, it seemed to create a more cohesive um, environment between all of those different departments, which um, didn't seem, at anyways, that they did. They did kind of fully acknowledge that before before we did start doing this work. I think maybe in, in some of the bigger um, local governments, it, it, there is a bit more of an understanding there, perhaps. Um, maybe, <laughs> yeah. um, but I think that it's so important. And um, to me, what I really learned was that the planners that I worked with were really instrumental in bringing those different departments together. Um, so focusing the message and the, the relationship between public health and urban planning was kind of the key, I think, key relationship to kind of start with in order for that understanding to emanate outwards towards different departments. That answered your question. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you.